So what you're looking at is the Wave software from Elgato. It's extremely popular. People love it. I love it. I use it every single day. Thank you, Elgato, for developing this. However, it is paywalled behind product. When I say that, you have to own the Elgato Wave Neo, the Wave 3, the Stream Deck Plus, or the Wave XLR, or the, even like the new XLR dock that goes on the back of the Stream Deck Plus. You have to own those to get Wave software. What if you could get it for free? Well... There is an option and it's this. This is Steel Series Sonar and it's not brand new. It's been out for a while, except they've recently done some updates. And what you can see is it's very similar to what you would have seen in Wave XLR. It's split streamer mode. It's got a dedicated streaming output so that you can have a different thing for your stream than what you have. Uh, but there are some extra features and it's probably maybe even a little bit easier to use for the beginning streamer. Oh, and did I mention that it's free? Covering this type of software is not new to this channel. I've actually done voice meter and several tutorials with voice meter over the years, and it's also a free solution, but it also can be clunky and kind of a little hard to learn at times. But when you look at SteelSeries Sonar, this looks like something you could probably jump into. So I'm actually going to walk you through the whole setup process and show you how it works. And uh, we'll go from there. To get started, you have to go to their website and actually grab the download. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to grab it. Uh, but you have to get the SteelSeries GG software. Uh, for it to actually work. And that is this software in its entirety. This is stuff where they're able to just basically pitch you a bunch of marketing stuff, but they allow you to turn things on and off. For example, Moments, which is just another capture software. They've got the engine. They've even got giveaway, giveaways, blah, 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 et cetera. I'm actually gonna turn Moments off. But then you can turn on Sonar and this will add a bunch of different inputs to your system. By the way, if you're asking about what the engine is, it's actually because I'm using the Pro Wireless headset. You don't have to have a SteelSeries product to be able to use this. Under your sound settings, you'll see that it's added several things from Steel Series, which is actually the media track, the gaming track, and the microphone track. Also, you get an aux and the actual output for stream. And then also for your input device, you actually can input your microphone and choose that as an output inside something like Discord or any kind of voice chat software, maybe even it's your capture software. You can separate them out with effects and everything that's inside their software. Oh, and yes, you're going to see a whole bunch of options, guys, is just because I also still have Wavelink connected. Uh, so just if you don't see those things, that's perfectly fine. Also, Oculus stays connected after I've disconnected it. That's so weird. Anyway, what I would recommend you do is go ahead and just change your output device and your input device for your system to the microphone and the gaming one, just so that we can go ahead and get started before we get into this. If for whatever reason Sonar is not enabled, here's how you enable it. Inside actual settings, you can see that it's turned off here. Sonar is off, click here to turn it on. You can go under settings and then also just enable it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on here and have Sonar turned on. That's where it's adding all of those audio features and all of those tracks, especially if they didn't add, toggle it off, turn it back on, and it should work. The next step is actually with the setup and it just is a click through window to be able to go and set up all of your audio devices. I can't re-trigger it here, but what I will say is just make sure that you select your headset or whatever Whatever you're going to be listening to as the output for all of them, game, chat, media, aux, whatever the case, just so that it actually spits out to that location, you're able to use it, and then make sure that your microphone, like for example, if it's a Fifine mic or if it's a mixer, just select it as your microphone. As you can see, I selected everything that was a wavelength going through here when I first set up, and it wasn't correct. I'm actually changing everything to my headset, which is just my Arctis Pro wireless headset. And then for my microphone, I'm selecting the Streamer X from Rode because that's what I'm running my interface through. All right, so everything technically is ready to go. And this is just the basic use of the software. We're able to just split out things like game, chat, media, and aux. This is not with streamer mode on. We can turn that on in just a moment, but I want to explain what each of these do. Under game, this is just essentially what your desktop sounds would be. This would be like anything from Chrome. So if I went to YouTube, for example, I've got a YouTube playing right here. It's just one of the videos that's on my channel and you can see old, like next series you're hearing myself uh, twice basically sigma 30 mm but anyway uh you what you can do is just control fantastic. all of the volumes yeah, with this really but what's really cool is now it's you can see at the bottom you see google chrome i'm gonna turn that all the way down for right now you can see that there's audio coming from google chrome and what's really cool is now i can split these out and have different volumes for example let me pull up spotify uh, so here's spotify and here's stream beats this is harris heller's uh stream beat stuff and i'm just playing the lo-fi playlist and i have the volume all the way down but what you can see is that there's sound coming from Spotify. I can grab this and drag it into any of the other areas and it now becomes a part of the mixer there. So I can have a different volume for my game as well as a different volume for my media. I'm gonna drop it on media, it's gonna be really loud, just give me a second. 
So there's the media audio. That's just the lo-fi coming from Stream Harris. Or <laughs> that's just the lo-fi audio coming from Harris Sellers Stream Beats. Anyway, so all I'm gonna do is just turn it down. Now you've got some audio just kind of like chilling in the background. Uh, but then you also get a master that controls everything and it is relative. So for example, I'll turn up this music right here. You'll see that this is down at like 2%. This is at uh, 14%. If I adjust this, I really like this because by pulling the master, everything adjusts in relative spots. And as I pull up, uh, they just move also back to where they were. I wish that Wave software would do something like this as well. You can also do things like chat. So if I pull up Discord, in Discord right now, you can actually see I'm in a party. No one's in here to like test with me essentially. But what I'm gonna do is uh, I can actually hit one of these soundboards. So I'm just gonna hit quack and you're gonna see the chat move right here. And all I've done is uh, just pull Discord over to here, which is really cool that you can just separate all this out. You can have different volume, everything, and it's just one piece of software. You also have other things. Any of the other apps that you have open on your computer, you can just grab them from here and just go ahead and reroute them, even if audio is not coming from them. So like, for example, you see OBS, you've got Wavelink, which is just everything that's running in the background that I could just route in different places. Now, the other really cool thing is you can have a chat mix where you can mix between what is your, what do you wanna hear from game or what do you wanna hear from just chat without having to adjust each of these individually. And you can always reset it by just double clicking it. What's really neat about the SteelSeries software is how simple it is to route the audio around the like system. But also what's interesting is each one of these has a dedicated equalizer as well as immersion. For example, here's the equalizer where you can go ahead and adjust any of the EQs. You can actually turn on spatial audio to kind of get that like immersive 7.1. You can also do volume boost and then smart volume. All these should be pretty simple. Uh, and if you don't understand how to do EQ, they even have the simple bass, voice, and treble adjustments, which is just like low, mids, and highs. What's also really neat is under the configuration for game, they have a lot of popular games, CSGO, Cyberpunk, Destiny 2, you know, Fall Guys, Genshin Impact, GTA 5, Phasmophobia. And all of these are just different EQ profiles to allow you to have kind of like the best experience in the game that people have created. And you can, I believe, create and add new presets that you want and keep them there uh, for your game. So what I'm gonna do is actually show you a test. Right now we're here, it's right here just in gaming. I'm gonna hit play. I can change any of these to different EQs activated. to feel Three, something different two, one. so that I can adjust these on and off to hear what these different sounds would be. There's even ones here for Minecraft. Hogwarts Legacy adds a lot more bass. Alan Wake 2 just does a little bit more of the Bosch highs. It's really neat that it allows it to kind of split out like this and you're able to test all of that out. But it's not just here. I'm gonna hit play one more time. Beta. We're gonna let it play. And this time Three, I'm gonna turn on spatial. Two, one. Performance kind of just like drives it direct in front of you. And then if you pull it over to Mission immersion, complete. it really opens it up into like 7.1 area. So you can get a lot more immersion. You can even set how far that immersion is or how far activated. those speakers would be to you. That's not the only one, because here's chat. You can EQ your chat. You can even do AI noise cancellation, things like what you would see from NVIDIA broadcast. This is included in here. However, I would encourage you if you're using Discord to just turn off, I think it's the crisp uh, one that's in there. Turn that off if you're gonna use this so that it is worked together against each other. You can also do noise reduction. You can even add a compressor or noise gate to be able to adjust some more stuff to a lot, have a lot more range. You can even have an EQ specifically for Spotify that adjusts or anything you want to put into this media channel, whether it be a movie, whatever the case, you have an aux that you can set up for whatever. And you even have a setup for your mic equalizer. You can do noise cancellation. You can do compressor, noise gate, noise reduction, the same thing as before. You can record and then hit play. So you can actually have a recording of your voice, adjust any of those sounds uh, to be able to set up your EQ. That's all really cool and how simple it is to adjust this. But right now what we're gonna do is actually toggle this mode right here, which says streamer mode. We're gonna turn this on and what you're gonna see is it's gonna split things out. And now you're getting not only your headset, but you're also getting stream. And what happens is inside OBS, let's say you're here inside OBS and you want to add that in. We're gonna add a source and we're gonna choose audio input capture. And we're just gonna say uh, steel series stream 
We're going to click, click OK, OK, and then, and then from, from here, here we, can we can choose, choose the drop down, down of SteelSeries Sonar, Sonar stream. stream. So everything we route through SteelSeries Stream, as you can see, is going to come through that spot. I have it muted because I don't want it to double because I have everything separated out for recording, but everything is going to come through here. One thing you need to be aware of is that it does add a slight delay when you're using this because it needs to add all those effects through SteelSeries and then pipe it back in. So what you can see is the actual bouncing here on my microphone, bup, bup, bup. It's a little delayed behind it. I don't think it's enough to be perceivable, but you can always make adjustments inside OBS if it is out of sync for async and video, or you can even do things for audio. So anyway, all of that is split out and makes this really simple. You can unmute these, you can mute these, you can turn them on, you get different adjustments here. And then same thing, you have a full stream volume adjustment that returns all of them back as far as a master. I really like that. You can even listen to what your audience is listening to by toggling this listen back feature, and you can adjust all of these settings. What people are going to ask is, Brandon, this is the Stream Deck Plus, and like the Wave software is so neat through it. The Beacon software has everything that connects through it. You know, how can I use this and be able to make those adjustments on fly? Adjust volume, mute things, etc. Well, they thought about that, and what you can do is under each of these, they have a little gear system. And under Personal and Stream, you can actually set up shortcuts and hotkeys to do volume up and volume down and mute for each of these. You could set them to, you know, Control Shift 1 through 12 on your keyboard. You could set up a second keyboard to be able to control things and you could do it all with existing hardware. You can even set up to use it inside something like a stream deck through shortcuts and hotkeys. Uh, even if you have like something like the really cool wave stream deck, the Neo stream deck they just released, it's a really good price. It gives you eight buttons and infinite pages. That one's really neat. Or if you have a 15 button or whatever the case, you could set it up as hotkeys on that. Just know that they don't have a dedicated support for still series uh, sonar for you to actually jump in here. If I type in sonar there isn't actually a sonar software to be able to do it directly to make it nice and simple through that so just know there's that limitation so i'll end by saying this i'm really excited that steel series released this and gave it to everyone the only requirement that i i really don't like is that you have to create an account to be able to use it. So you have to give them your email, you gotta make a password, your all that stuff with them to make an account to unlock this, to be able to use Sonar. But in some cases, you know, to get all of this functionality and all they're gonna do is probably send me some marketing materials, I think that's a pretty good trade-off. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you want more information or really in-depth setup on how I would use it inside of OBS, please make sure you comment down below. Thank you so much. Check out any of these other videos like the voice meter video or even talking about the Wave software or any of the other pieces I'll put right here. I appreciate you guys. I hope you all have a great day.